What's up, y'all? I'm Ratter Tatter, and welcome back to another Black Sheep Review. Now, I know what you must be thinking. Hey, where the heck is Jill Pill? Well, first off, screw you. I'm pretty cool, too. And secondly, as you may recall, a year ago, I commandeered the review of the cult classic Okami for my birthday month. Turns out, it actually went pretty well, and I had a ton of fun. So, we decided to make my birthday month review an annual tradition. Only this year, I had a bit of a tough time deciding what title to review. I knew I wanted to cover something a little different than Chill Pill's usual style of game, but which indie from the dauntingly immense catalog of Steam titles should I choose? Then, I remembered Moss, a PSVR game featuring a cute little mouse, and I thought, what other game could possibly be more perfect for me, Ratter Tatter, to review for my birthday month and one about an adorable rodent? Since you know, I'm a mouse, duh. There isn't one. Let's do this thing. I was absolutely stoked for this game when it was first announced at E3 in 2017, so when it released a couple months ago, it was only a matter of time before I dove into this mousy PSVR adventure. Moss's story is delivered to you by Storybook and is reminiscent of old classic tales of knights, kingdoms, and chivalry. You begin in the Hogwarts Great Hall, where you flip through the pages of the massive book in front of you as a motherly voice narrates. You eventually get sucked in Tom Riddle's diary style and begin to experience the story firsthand as the silent observer known only as the reader. But I think no face is a little more appropriate. The plot itself is a bit front-loaded, giving you a hefty dose of backstory well before your adventure actually gets started. In the first moments of the game, you learn that evil forces invaded the Kingdom of Moss, killed the king, and drove the animals out of the city in order to obtain the power of some glowy glass orb. Commander Argus and a helpful sprite warrior work together to hold back the enemy and seal a gate, protecting all of Critterkind from further attack. Sadly, our sprite compatriot didn't survive the ordeal, and later grew into a big ol' tree, which then craps out one of those glowy power orbs just in time for adorable Miss Quill to find it. She then takes the glowy ball to her uncle Argus, who gets pissed and gallops away on his squirrel steed saying he's gonna fix everything and then doesn't come back. So, knockoff Navi here shows up and gently prods Quill to venture out in the hopes of finding her uncle, who, by the way, was captured almost immediately after leaving and is being held in the old castle where Sarfog, the evil basilisk, now lives. This is when your adventure finally begins. You and Quill make your way through the gorgeous world, solving puzzles and defeating baddies together in order to rescue Uncle Argus. Essentially, all story development is given to you, with a few points bit glossed over, mind you, within the first 30 minutes of this four hour long game. And once you do finally get past the frickin' basilisk and rescue Quill's uncle, the game leaves an opening that's basically a mile wide for an inevitable squeakle. I found this a bit anticlimactic, to be honest, and thought that just one more chapter could have wrapped up the story nicely. But instead, I was left feeling like it stopped just short of a satisfying conclusion. Come on, Polyarch! Why are you gonna be such a tease? When you were little, did you ever wish you could live inside your favorite movie or book? Like, really be in the world, not just imagining it or watching it on screen. Well, that's exactly how Moss feels. In fact, if the Redwall book series was ever turned into a video game, this is probably what it would look like. The luscious VR world is fully constructed around your viewpoint so that no matter where you look, you are completely surrounded by the environment with some areas even requiring you to peer around objects or stand up to get a better line of sight, which really enhances the immersion. You'll just have to trust me that the world is breathtaking in VR, because unfortunately, the gameplay capture footage pales in comparison to the real experience. So just give up food this month, fork over a couple hundred bucks to your local game shop, and prepare your body for a truly awe-inspiring virtual experience! Moss's art style is reminiscent of a Disney fairy tale movie, which works perfectly with the story. And the character animations were fluid and lifelike, as far as anthropomorphic characters go. Just look at Quill moving around. Her ears flap back with the breeze as she jumps, 
Her hips and tail sway as her weight is shifted with each step, and even her climbing animation has a little struggle to it, which is more realistic than some human characters I've seen. I mean, come on! How could you not want to protect a protagonist as precious as this? Quill is seriously the cutest rodent I have ever seen in a game, and the fact that I can get up close and personal in VR only enhanced my love for her. Oh, look at you, Quill. You're so cute, aren't you? Oh, look at your ears and your tail, and oh my goodness, I don't think I can love anyone more than I love you. Oh my goodness, you're running! Stiff oh, upper lip, Banjo. The only nitpicky complaint I can really think of is that the graphics are a tad bit fuzzy, but I think that's due to the limitations of the PSVR headset. Overall, I'd say Moss's art is its biggest achievement, and this little mouseketeer has stolen my heart. And probably stashed it away with a button and some stale crackers. Now I will pretend to be anywhere near Chill Pill's level when it comes to understanding music composition, but I can speak to the emotional influence a soundtrack has, and in the case of Moss, that really does seem to be the music's main purpose. The gorgeous compositions utilizing live instruments serve as background music to heighten the ambiance of an area or evoke the emotional state of a certain situation, but is not meant to be much more. For example, when we first meet our heroine in the clearing, the tone of the music is serene and optimistic. While the Meyer Temple is more mysterious and somber to match the area's ancient ruins. And Sarfog's domain is fast-paced and tense to increase the anxiety of being hunted by the basilisk. While I found Moss's soundtrack to be beautiful and a perfect fit for the overall tone of the game, it just wasn't memorable. On top of that, the music would often just fade away after the first few minutes of being in a room, leaving me to feel like I was taking too long to solve a puzzle, which kind of sullied the mood. However, what you were left with in those moments were the ambient sound effects, which were actually phenomenal. The trickle of a bubbling brook nearby. The song of crickets at night or the crackle of burning torches in the temple, all contributed to my overall immersion in the world. And hearing it all in stereo through a pair of quality headphones didn't hurt either. Especially when it's razor quality. <laughs> Speaking of contributions, Quill's sound effects were too freaking adorable. Things like the pitter-patter of her tiny feet, her excited hoot when we'd find a collectible, and the little grunt she makes when pulling herself up on a ledge, were just the cherry on top of the cuteness sundae. And now we've come to the part I have been dreading. Sadly, the gameplay has some big flaws that I just can't ignore. Don't get me wrong, the gameplay isn't a complete failure by any means, but it does leave much to be desired. I mean, the general concept of the controls is actually pretty interesting. Quill is operated by the usual joystick and button style gameplay, while the reader, aka No Face, aka you, operate as a sidekick, able to reach into the world using motion controls to grab, move, and turn objects, as well as heal Quill when needed, which made me feel like an integral part of the adventure. The main problem with this, though, is that motion controls are imprecise, which can cause serious issues during combat, and can get extremely out of whack if you aren't positioned just right. To be fair, I fully acknowledge these issues aren't actually the dev's fault, but it did affect my experience with the game and is still worth addressing. Outside of the VR hardware issues, though, the rest of the gameplay was actually... still not great. There was little to no character progression. Quill gets a cool new sword really early on, and that's about it. The only sort of development is your ability to grab enemies and force them to do your bidding, a la the Imperius Curse for you fellow Potterheads out there. 
This does give a tiny bit of variety in combat and puzzle solving, but that ability is also introduced early on and there are only three enemy types to play puppeteer with. The only real character interaction you have in the game is with Quill when she occasionally gives you a high five, mimes out hints to puzzle solutions, or uses real sign language to communicate with you, which was legit pretty cool. Outside of that though, all the conversations Quill has with the other characters are narrated to you while you flip through the book. And it's no big deal, and I'm totally not salty about it or anything, but the couple of NPCs present in Quill's little village actively refuse to talk to her, the rude little pop belly Why won't anybody talk to me? Is it my face? I can't help the way I was born! <sighs> Even the collectibles were lackluster. There's little parchment scrolls that gradually fill in this narcissistic stained glass picture of you, clearly the most important character in the game, and some fairy fart dust you get from destroying crap that just kinda lives in this bottle for some reason. The level design itself is pretty decent as its puzzle designs and battles are planned with the VR viewpoint in mind, but sadly, that's one of only a couple redeeming qualities for Moss's gameplay. I suppose it'd be too much to expect Moss to be a fully fleshed out example of VR gaming perfection when the technology is still in its early stages, but it's still disappointing. I do have to give Polyarch some props. There are so few options for the VR platform that are more than just another AAA port, on-rail shooter, or one of an infinite number of activity simulators. It's refreshing to see a VR game that has a bit of substance and care put into it, especially for an indie title. Sadly, this is the first generation of VR gaming, and in just a few years' time, the graphics and motion controls of the PSVR will undoubtedly be vastly improved upon, which will make Moss look and feel outdated pretty quickly. But for right now, it was a fantastic experience. The art, music, and story all came together to create a cohesive and immersive fairy tale world, and the devs' impressive attention to detail made for some incredibly captivating environments. Look at this! There are so many damaged pieces of human-sized armor and weapons lodged in the ground here, and judging by the amount of rust and weathering, they've probably been there for quite some time. There's clearly another, even older story than Quill's adventure that gives the world of Moss so much more depth than is apparent at the surface. And I'm itching to know more, dammit! It's a real shame the story ended so soon, but like all story-driven games, once the story is told, there's no real motivation to go back and play it again, so I will be patiently awaiting the release of Book 2. In the meantime, I am happy fondly looking back on the absolute, unmitigated joy I found while spending time with my new favorite mouse, the oh-so-brave and oh-so-adorable Quill. During my time with Moss, I just could not get enough of adorable little Quill, and the game overall was pretty fun too. While I did feel a bit too short and some of the VR mechanics are not quite ironed out, the world the devs created through the art, music, and story is incredibly immersive and charming. That's why I give Moss a rating of... Remarkable. With an asterisk. If this game were not in VR, it likely would have ranked lower. But what it achieved with this fairly new technology helped it just squeak by with a higher score. And with that, this is Ratter Tatter reminding you, when it's your birthday, the calories don't count. It's science, trust me. See ya! Yay. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy bit and whatever you know the rest. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my Rodentacular review. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more puntastic indie game content. Question for you: What birthday traditions do you have? Let us know in the comments below, and we'll see y'all next time.